Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 in May. Welcome to uh, our new day and in, in your life and I hope that everything's going great for you. You know, it's one of those times in life where it's uh, sometimes not as, uh, as we expected it would be, but I hope that whatever's happening in your life is bringing you uh, lessons and, uh, and pleasure and joy. This is the, the way that we should be living, I believe, in our, in our 60s. Now, I'm starting my day with a cup of tea, as I always do. I hope you got a cup of tea or coffee or something good to drink and nourish you, give you some strength uh, for the day. <laughs> I'm drinking uh, a pack is three mint. Uh, I actually quite like this three mint tea. I'm not a big mint tea drinker, but I like this one. And it's got uh, peppermint, spearmint, and field mint, which I think is just that beautiful mint we that we grow in the garden. But anyway, that's my tea for today. And I'm drinking it in one of my matching blue cups. <laughs> just decided to match today. But hope that you're doing great. Hope you got a smoothie or juice. Um, Oh, I don't know, coffee, whatever you love. But uh, thank you again for being here. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, the topic today, I hope you enjoy because um, it's a little bit frivolous, and it, but in a way it's, it's deep. It's, uh, it's something that I don't think about myself personally too much because I don't have the thing that I'm going to talk about. But for those of you who do, or those of you who can create it in a place that um, is special to you, then this will all make perfect sense. Now, uh, one of our bloggers, um, Robin Griffiths, wrote this article on how to cultivate a garden. And she talks about it in a kind of symbolic way. So I don't have a garden. I have one little plant here in my house. It's a little jasmine. And if it doesn't flower soon, I'm going to get really depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's managed to survive two um, three-week trips that I've taken, and uh, so it's my it's my friend. But anyway, Robin talks about how uh, being a, nourishing in a garden and taking care of your garden is a, really an analogy for life in general. How are you dealing uh, and nourishing your garden of life? Are you taking care of yourself? Taking care of your well-being? You know, are you planting the right seeds? Are you getting the right kind of light and nourishment and goodness in, into, your, into your world? And, you know, are you doing things in the short term that are going to have a benefit in the long term? I think gardens are an amazing um, lesson in patience and faith <laughs> that we're, we're putting a seed in the ground and, and hoping it's, it's going to grow. So I think that she uh, points out these kind of analogies are, are really interesting. Like, for example, the soil has to be tilled and fertilized. You know, the, the, the seeds have to be planted at the proper time. You have to give them time. They have to get the right temperature and the right amount of water. And then they have to be protected from weeds and um, you know, things that might harm them, but little insects and bugs. <laughs> and then they need trimming and support. So those are the things that Robin talks about a plant needs in a garden. And I think that's a really, if you you're almost know where we're going to go with this, don't you? Because the analogy is so obvious. You know, we have to do some basic things like to, to, you know, prepare our life for the for the things that we want to do. We have to, you know, prepare the ground. We have to put ourselves in the right place. You know, with the right people. You know, we have to keep those weeds away, those toxic people, or those things that are going to influence influence us and keep us in a negative state of mind. You know, it's important that we that we that we till the garden and we and we watch out for it and adjust and change as needed. You know, if it's going to rain one day or you're going to get hailstorms, you've got to sort of protect uh, your garden. And like for like yourself, you've got to protect yourself from the things that can happen that are unexpected and make sure you don't get hurt by those things. And of course, you've got to care for your own mental and physical health. You've got to know what kind of seeds to plant in your life that are going to be good for you, that are going to nourish you and give you what you what you want from from the skills and the and the things that you love to do in your life. And again, you know, you've got to focus on the positive. You have to have faith in yourself that you are going to grow every day into the world that you're living in. And I think this is, I always find this when I go out into nature and into a forest or into the, just by the creek where I, I go walking with my grandson, um, is that it, it changes so frequently. Like you get, because the sun may be shining one day, it may have had a really bad rainstorm. And you can see that Mother Nature just knows how to absorb and adapt. And I think that that's something that we need to do um, in our lives as well. 
Robin also talks about um, you know taking care of our needs, and this is super important actually. It's like uh, you know Mother Nature needs fertilizer sometimes. I mean the garden needs uh, help sometimes, so we put compost in. So, and actually that's a good analogy too. That it's sometimes not always pleasant the things that we have to incorporate into our lives to make it um, um, a full and meaningful time in, in of existence. And we need to you know look at our life garden as being in a process that it doesn't always we're not always smelling like roses and beautiful and, and joyful. Sometimes it's tough. We've got thorns and, uh, you know, little things attacking us and negativity all around us, bad influences, things that hurt us. And that's the kind of um, adaptability that we have to, we, we bring to our garden, but we also can bring to our lives. And, you know, another thing that she talks about, which is so obvious, is that we need the right nutrients and whether those nutrients are the food that we eat, the exercise that we give ourselves, the uh, supplements that we might take, the care that we take for our skin or our body and um, how we, you know, we go for a massage. We do just do things that make us feel um, pampered and cared for and healthy. Do we do health checkups? I mean, you go out to your garden every other day and you just take a look and see how's everything doing? You know, is that plant growing yet? Is, it, is my um, my jasmine plant growing? <laughs> and you do things to help it, you know, and you just give it a health checkup. And I think we should do that in our lives as well. And it doesn't have to be just physical. It can be getting mental health um, help if you need to talk to a counselor or joining a group or volunteering you know, doing something that's really going to make a difference in some, someone else's life and um, you know, taking the goodness that you are applying to your own life and sharing it, which is in itself a beautiful exercise. And I think that's um, the nutrient aspect of it is super important. Nourish yourself. Have good cups of tea every now and again. Do things that make you feel good. Do things that make you feel good and, and, and are good for you inside. Another thing is weeding. Weed out the good, weed out the bad and plant the good, you know, weed out the things that are going to get in your way, that not necessarily the harmful things, but just the things that don't um, nourish you, that don't serve you well. Uh, you know, it's hard. We've talked about this before with, with people because, I mean, of course, a lot of women are getting divorced in their 60s. They felt that those situations were not nourishing, that they were harmful to their garden of life. And that's certainly uh, understandable. And sometimes there are friends that we have known for years and years, and sometimes it's family, who are just no longer aligned to us. They don't nourish us. They have their own life and their own ways. And we have to just... Um, let them go from our garden, you know, let them grow in their own garden beautifully, doing the things they love, but let them go away from our own space. And in doing that, in doing that, we create a space for positive influences to come in. You know, you can take a lot of energy and mind share and, um, you know, joy from your life by worrying about other people that uh, are, are negative influences in your life. And I'm not saying abandon all your friends, stay by them if they need you. I mean, everyone goes through tough times. But if you've got someone that's really harming you emotionally, then it's probably good to let that go and create an opportunity for a new person to come into your life and uh, to make it, um, you know, make it more nourishing for you. So those are some of the things that um, that Robin talks about in your, creating a, a beautiful, positive life garden, using some of the analogies from nature and applying them to our to our own lives. I think it's kind of cool, actually. I learned a lot from it and uh, it was really fun uh, sharing it with you. So go out and um, pick some flowers today. Go, go, go buy some flowers. I always love flowers in my house. They always nourish me. But um, find out what kind of, or de define what kind of garden you will grow going forward. How are you going to grow your life garden going forward? Look forward to your comments. Leave your, your comments in the section below. Let's uh, share with each other and uh, tell a friend about 60 and Me. Tell them what we talk about here, whether it's useful and fun to you, uh, whether it um, gives you something to think about today. And uh, tell us what kind of life garden you're going to be growing for uh, this for uh, the forward. I really appreciate it. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Take very good care and we'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.